And now for something completely different. That could be the official tagline for our next category, which honors the surprising, the off-kilter, the uncategorizable, in short, the best unique theatrical experience of the season. Heather Christian's Oratorio for Living Things, which packed six musicians, 12 singers, and a few centuries worth of music, musical genres into the confines of Ars Nova's Greenwich House Theater, was a revelation to the audiences that experienced it. This unique theatrical experience is a classical oratorio, but it incorporates blues and, and electronica in addition to traditional choral music. It's about science, time, and man's place in the universe, but also the tiny memories that make up our daily lives. It's deeply contemporary and highly theatrical. As the New York Times put it, oratorial for living things inspires the kind of awe you feel in a cathedral where the architecture itself forces one's thoughts upward and outward. Oh, okay, something like that. <laughs> this year's award for the best unique theatrical experience of the season goes to the Ars Nova production of Oratorio for Living Things. Here to accept the award is the producing executive director of Ars Nova, Renee Blinkwalt. I'm so sorry I'm not Heather Christian or <laughs> Lee Sunday Evans. Um, I always feel really lucky to have the opportunity to listen to either of those extraordinary women uh, out of whose hearts and minds came Oratorio. So not them, but I'm going to do my very best. And I did write things down to try to ensure that that happened. Um, so Ars Nova commissioned Oratorio, or what would become Oratorio for Living Things in 2016. So in March of 2020, we had already been working together for many years. Then we had two preview performances before we shut down to wait out the pandemic. We would reopen Oratorio 2.0 exactly two years after our originally scheduled opening. And that is a unique theatrical experience. <laughs> Oratorio was for us, for Ars Nova and everyone who came together to make it a beacon in the darkest of times. It was a touchstone to remind ourselves why it was important to get up today and keep trying to figure out how to be a theater company or make theater in a pandemic when no one left their house. A reason to believe that we would get through this because we needed to for Heather and for Lee and Ben and Crit and Marianne and Jeanette and everyone who would eventually join us, Onyi, the whole team. When it is so, so hard to do what you do to contribute what you feel you have been called upon to offer with your one wild and precious life, you need a reason to hope. An oratorio was for us that hope. The trust we built with each other as we bumped around in the pitch darkness searching for light became the heart of the show that we would eventually be able to share. And the fact that that beating, the beating of that heart resonated so profoundly with the people who chose actively to spend 90 minutes in an enclosed space with unmasked performers singing directly into their faces um, was a source of great joy and great pride. No, seriously, thank you so much to those people. Um, <laughs> it was a source of great pride and, and great joy because it strengthens our resolve that how we make is as important as what we make that if you are seeking to create a transformative experience in others, you will inevitably also have to transform yourself in the process. So on behalf of all of those people who came together to make our um, unique experience, I offer our deep thanks to you all, to the Off-Broadway community, and especially the artists among us for not giving up, 
for not leaving, for still showing up, for leading us bravely through this transformation, and especially for gifting us the uniquely theatrical connection and catharsis of theater and oratorio for living things. Thank you.